As a podcaster, what tools do you use? Thank you. The reason why I like podcasting is because it's really simple. It's actually quite a quick thing to do as long as you've got the appropriate tools. And in the back of my mind, there's always that kind of rational or instrumental calculation between the time and effort it takes to me as a teacher planning and preparing against the impact that it has for the learner. So obviously the dream is reduced prep time for me, but maximum impact for learners learning. And podcast offers me that, that purely instrumental, purely um, utilitarian approach, I think. So basically you need a way of recording your voice through a microphone into a digital format and then you need a way or a place somewhere to stick those files that learners know and they can get access to and they can either play them there or download them and carry them around on a portable device. And there's two ways of doing that. You could use a standalone separate digital voice recorder or you could use a program that is actually embedded in your PC or your laptop um, and, and they're your basic two possibilities. So first of all, you could use just a very simple digital voice recorder. Um, there is a, a kind of cost-quality relationship. Um, I think a, a decent digital voice recorder, which just plugs straight into a USB port, are about £60, £70 pound these days. If you do buy one of these, they're portable, you can go to different rooms, you can record them at home, you can also record them in your office or your workspace. Also means that you can lend them to learners and learners can go off and make recordings themselves. It's just highly portable, highly easy and simple and straightforward. But you must make sure that you record an MP3. MP3 is a digital universal standard, it's a file format that almost every single computer and every single personal media player and phone etc um, will actually play. Now it's not just about the cost and quality of these things, it's also about the cost and quality of the mic. And they do have a mic, you could just stand there and literally talk into it, but for a kind of richer, warmer quality, what I actually find is that I spend as much on my mic as I actually do on the, the kind of product itself. And um, I just buy a decent mic, this mic costs about £80, and I just have a simple kind of device to diffuse the sound, and that's what I use sometimes to make my, uh, my digital voice recordings, my, my podcasts. And you just plug them into your PC as MP3 files, upload them to wherever it is you store your files, and then you can go from there. There are other possibilities and in particular, there's a way of recording and editing if you use these things and it goes wrong. So first of all, if you look at the screenshot behind me, this is Audacity. This is actually a Mac um, screenshot, but it pretty much looks the same for PC as well. And this is Audacity as a product. It's a piece of freeware. It's available to download, although obviously you'd need your institutional permission if you wish to install um, you know, programs on, on a machine that's actually at work or at placement, not something you own yourself. Audacity is a recording and editing audio software suite. So you have a mic, which you plug into your computer, which could be an actual mic, it could be a USB mic, it could even be a mic embedded on a webcam, and most webcams have mics attached to them now. And Audacity will find the mic and, and have it as a mic rather than as a webcam, if that makes sense. If you go back to the, um, the screenshot, what you then get is you get a kind of play, stop, pause, fast forward, rewind button. And as you record, you can see the signature of the WAV file going up at noisy moments and going down at quiet and silent moments and you can just record into MP3 it's very very simple now the only technicality with Audacity is if you want to record as MP3 you need to download the LAME the LAM MP3 extension file but if you google that it's incredibly straightforward so you don't just install the software you also have to install the code 
for the extension of the file type that we want to save it as. And that's ridiculously complicated in practice. You literally Google MP3, LAME, Audacity, and you can find the file and install it relatively simply. What Audacity does let you do, either in files that you've recorded here, or files that you've recorded on here, is it lets you edit. And if you stretch and elongate the actual audio file, you can really highlight and click out and splice together, relatively simply, different audios and edit audios. Finally, in the last few seconds remaining in this podcast, once you've made your audio, you need somewhere to store it. And I guess you have two options here. Um, you need um, a VOE, um, you need a virtual learning environment, or you might just need a blog. And at the moment, I choose to have my podcast in my blog, which if you're interested, you can find by just Googling Warren, PSET and podcast, and you'll find my blog quite simply. But in terms of schools and college usage, you'd probably have a VOE. And these are the tools that you need as a podcast.